In the Netflix movie Don't Look Up, two scientists discover a comet that is heading directly for Earth. In the movie, they use state-of-the-art equipment to track the comet. But what if I told you that you can watch and photograph comets from your own backyard? If you want to find out how, then stick around. I hear there's uh, something you don't like the looks of. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. So what is a comet? Well, comets are large objects made out of dust and ice that orbit the sun. They are best known for their long comet tails that often span millions of kilometers. Most comets are found in a wide disk beyond the orbit of Neptune in the Kuiper Belt. We call these short period comets because most of the comets from the Kuiper Belt take about 200 years or less to orbit the sun, which is actually a pretty long time. In the Netflix movie Don't Look Up, Comet Dibieski originated from the Oort Cloud, which is the sphere-shaped outer edge of the solar system that is about 50 times farther away from the Sun than the Kuiper Belt. To give you an idea, it will take Voyager 1, launched in 1977, another 300 years to reach the Oort Cloud. Now, comets that are from the Oort Cloud, they are called long-period comets. These comets will take more than 250,000 years to make just one trip around the sun. At this exact moment, I say we sit tight and assess. Sit tight and assess? Sit tight. And then assess. The sit tight part comes first, then you gotta digest it. That's the assessment period. So what brings comets near Earth so we can see them? Well, the gravity of nearby planets and also our Sun, they pull on comets from their homes in the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud. Now, this gravitational tug can redirect a comet towards the Sun. Now, when that happens, the comet is pulled faster and faster towards the Sun and it eventually swings around behind the Sun and then heads back towards where it came from, or it will crash into the Sun. When a comet is relatively close to Earth in the inner solar system, that's when we may see it in our skies with the naked eye or through our backyard telescopes. How big is this thing going? I can't destroy my ex-wife's house. Is that possible? <laughs> there is a 100% chance that we're all going to die! Hey. I'll just... Hey. Okay. Well, the handsome astronomer can come back anytime, but the yelling lady, mm, not so much. Not so much. So what are the different parts of a comet? Well, at the heart of every comet, there is a solid frozen core which is called a nucleus. This ball of dust and ice is usually less than 15 kilometers across, so that's the size of a small town. However, when a comet gets close to the sun, it starts heating up and eventually the ice begins to turn into gas. And this causes jets of gas and dust to burst out of the comet. The gas and dust create a huge fuzzy cloud around the nucleus, which is called the comet's coma. As dust and gases stream away from the nucleus, sunlight and particles coming from the sun push them into a bright tail that stretches behind the comet for millions of kilometers. Most comets have actually two tails. The white tail is the dust tail and it usually shows a curving path behind the comet. The other tail is bluish and it is made up out of electrically charged gas molecules or ions. The ion tail of the comet always points directly away from the sun. You guys discovered a comet? I have a tattoo of a shooting star on my back. Oh, that, that's, that's terrific. <laughs> so how can you actually find a comet in the sky? Well, comets are continuously on the move. So if you want to know the position of a comet, you'll first need to check its most accurate position in the sky. Websites like the Sky Live offer information on the exact location and brightness of a comet. Also, you can find star charts that demonstrate where you'll be able to spot the comet in the sky, depending on your location. At the time of this video, Comet Leonard is one of the brightest comets in the night sky. The brightness of these objects in space are expressed in magnitude. The lower the magnitude is, the brighter the object. When a comet reaches an observed magnitude of 6 or less, you may be able to spot it in the night sky with the naked eye, especially when the comet is visible in the sky after sunset or before sunrise. If the comet is visible with the naked eye, you can use mobile apps such as Stellarium or Sky Safari, which will show you a virtual reality map of the sky from your exact location, so you'll be able to find that comet. You know that girl from Live TV said we're all gonna die? No. Yo, bro! 
So how can you find a comet with a telescope? If a comet has an observed magnitude of 7 or higher, you can only spot that comet with your backyard telescope. If you also have a computerized equatorial mount, you can type in the declination and write ascension coordinates of any comet within our solar system on your hand controller. Declination coordinates are given in degrees, arc minutes and arc seconds, whereas right ascension coordinates are in hours, minutes and seconds. The telescope will then automatically slew to those coordinates and track the comet in the night sky. I personally use a software program called Sequence Generator Pro, with which I can control my equatorial mount from my laptop and PC using ASCOM and plate solving. I've made separate videos and blogs on how to use various equatorial mounts as well as software programs such as Sequence Generator Pro and you can find links in the video description below. There it is. There you are. Can you take a picture or video of a comet in the sky? Of course! If a comet is visible with the naked eye, you can take a picture using your regular DSLR camera. For example, this is my picture of Comet Neowise taken with my Canon M50 camera, which was visible during the summer of 2021. You can put your DSLR camera on a tripod to avoid any vibrations. Also, I recommend you put your lens to affinity and set your ISO level to about 1600. A low F ratio is recommended as a bigger aperture helps to catch the dim light from space. As comets are relatively bright, you'll only need a shutter time of a couple of seconds to photograph a comet. I would recommend you'll also use a remote shutter or a countdown on your DSLR to avoid any vibrations. So if you're using an equatorial mount to track the comet, you can of course try to take longer exposure pictures, as your mount compensates for the Earth's rotation. I personally experimented with taking 30 to 60 second pictures of a comet using my equatorial mount, telescope and camera. I usually try to track comets for a couple of hours, so I'll end up with hundreds of pictures. It's very easy to put these pictures in a video sequence using free software tools such as the free video editor in the photo app on a Windows PC. If you display the pictures in chronological order with about 0.04 seconds per picture, you'll end up with a wonderful time-lapse video of a comet. For example, if you have 250 pictures of a comet, you can create a timeless video of 250 pictures times 0.04 seconds is about 10 seconds. I'll put several links in the video description below on how to create a timeless video of the night sky either when using a DSLR camera or when also using a telescope, an equatorial mount and a camera. I would highly encourage you to go out and try to watch and capture a comet yourself. It's super fun and exciting to do. Also, don't worry about a comet impacting the Earth, like in the movie Don't Look Up. The chance of a comet impacting the Earth is actually 0 0.0000000. The destruction of the entire planet isn't supposed to be fun. Maybe it's supposed to be terrifying and unsettling. Oh, please don't do that. And you should stay up please. all night, every night, crying. When we're all 100% for sure gonna f***ing die!